Welcome to the FanDuel Punch Out. I'm Jason Gilbo, J Gilbo 11. With me is Russell Clay at Russell J Clay. Taking a look at tonight's eight game FanDuel slate. And uh, I don't know, this one's kind of fun. I mean, there's uh, more than half of these guys are above average pitchers. So it should be pretty interesting as far as which yeah. way people go. Yeah, no, this is really fun. Um, it, it's kind of like a lot of those mid range, like you like starting these guys. Um, but at the same time, hey, maybe there are a few chinks in the armor. So. Um, yeah, I, I mean, we say there's a lot of ways to go. Um, there aren't necessarily unlimited ways to go tonight, but I think there are a few interesting pitchers to potentially go after. Yeah, definitely. And, and this first one here, we got the Rays and Royals, Danny Duffy versus Chris Archer, uh, obviously two above average pitchers uh, in a friendly ballpark. Um, for me, if I'm looking to target, it's, it's going to be against Duffy, uh, just given what those right-handed bats of the Rays, um, mm. who have you know good track records against lefties. I mean, Guy or Longoria, Forsythe, Pierce. I mean, the front four there are are intriguing, even though Duffy has been better this year. That's kind of who I was referring to a little bit in the first one. It's like Danny Duffy's solid, but I think those splits for for the Rays versus lefties are are really promising. So I think the front of that lineup's definitely in play. Probably stick to tournaments with it, but at the same time... Is it Laura? No. Ooh, bummer. Bummer. Anyway, um, yeah, you want to play those righties against uh, against Duffy here. Yeah, I'm definitely in agreement. I think tournaments, um, just because, I mean, you look, the Rays still have a really high strikeout rate against lefties. I mean, I'm all for Duffy in the tournament play as well. So it's like, you know, I, I think it could lean way one or the other, just given the fact that the Rays can go quiet at times. Definitely. So uh, as far as the Royals go, um, I'm not really intrigued with any of these guys. Um, Archer is much better at home. Obviously, there has been um, some home run potential for some of these guys against Archer, but the Royals really aren't a power team. Um, I mean, in fact, they rank near the Braves in, in, in ISO against righties. So, Oof. yeah, I'm kind of just, you know, uh, staying put. I might make a move with Salvador Perez at 2-7, but outside of that, not really a ton I like here. Is there anything we can take away from Archer's last two starts heading into this matchup, or is it just kind of its own independent? Um, like Rockies Dodgers obviously had 19 strikeouts in those last two appearances. Um, are those offenses kind of like the Royals, or are the Royals just kind of their own entity that that won't necessarily correlate to? I don't think they're quite – I mean – I mean, the the core start was definitely intriguing. I mean, that was something that was showed me that well, Archer might be turning things around here. I mean, that was a different yeah. animal. And even against the Dodgers, I mean, had a little bit of a uh, rocky inning, but for the most part, threw really well. Um, so I, I do think he's kind of coming into his own, and this Royals really offense isn't that um, isn't that great. So I, I'm kind of just staying away for the most part. Yeah, and while we usually avoid the strikeout upside with the Royals, Archer does have eight or more strikeouts in six of his last ten games. So, I mean, there is that. So I do think there's quite a bit of upside here. I, I kind of think he's he's definitely in cash contention for me tonight. Yeah, definitely. So I'm okay with that, um, and, and I'm kind of just staying away from Royals. Yeah, for sure. Uh, Twins Indians next here, and, and this is kind of another one where – uh, I'm not really looking to use twins in this one against Salazar, um, who's kind of he's one of my favorite pitchers on the night. Um, yeah. So I mean, for real, I mean Salazar doesn't have any real exploitable numbers. I mean, really solid against lefties this year. Um, you know, solid against right-handers. So I think overall, you're just kind of going. Mm, twins are an easy pass. Easy pass. No need to to do that. I don't think because. I mean, I guess you could go Max Kepler in a deep tournament, but there's nothing really you're looking at as a viable cash option or anything like that. Yeah, I don't think so either. So uh, for me, I mean, I, I think you're looking here at the Indian side um, at their prices who are a little bit high, but obviously you still kind of got those guys down low like Ramirez and Chisholm that aren't bad. And Nyquist's price is starting to come down a little bit too. Yeah, um, I think we definitely like this lineup once again. Um, obviously, their prices are tamer um, than they are usually on DK. Uh, so, FanDuel. what? In comparison to FanDuel or DK? Yeah, in comparison to uh, FanDuel. I mean, they're they're like that top four range is always like around twenty k total, right? Yeah, FanDuel definitely more generous. Yeah. 
So um, I like that they're all under 4K other than Napoli. I think we can definitely look at some of the top of that order in cash. Yeah, definitely. And and I like, I mean, I like a Lindor Kipnis do up the middle. Um, and I think the trouble thing is it's always like, do I look for Santana or do I look at Napoli? I mean, both are intriguing options. Um, but I, th I think the, the price range for the first baseman are a little bit higher than I like. Mm -hmm. Definitely so. agree. Um, and like you mentioned, I like Chisholm Hall as well. Yeah. Uh, Yankees and Mets here, Logan Verre with CC Sabathia. And um, this Mets lineup, I mean, we saw it without Cespedes. We saw it without Granderson. It's just kind of an ugly one. Um, except for Neil Walker. Yeah, except for Neil Walker, who's oddly been solid against lefties this year. Um, and, and I don't have a problem with Walker at that price tag or Wilmer Flores at 3-2. Um, other than that, it's not really a, a pretty lineup to kind of go and attack with. Yeah, I mean, 12 hits in his last five games, so... That's pretty good. Um, obviously not an optimal matchup against Sabathia, but he's really the only guy I'm looking at in this lineup. I mean, James Loney hasn't been bad, but it's lefty on lefty, so you're probably avoiding that. Um, and as far as the Yankees go, I mean, this would normally be something to target, but who knows with Beltran potentially on the block here. You know, I don't, I don't really trust this lineup right now. Maybe a Brian yeah. McCann at 32 I'm okay with. Yeah, I'm definitely looking at McCann. If Beltron does stick around, I mean, that's also the thing with Archer. I mean, there could be a shot that Archer doesn't even pitch today just given the fact that he's a name being talked about. So it, it's definitely going to be those ones where things might completely shift around by the time 4 o'clock rolls. Right. It, it is a crazy time of the year. I mean, guys are just switching orders and then just – into new lineups pretty instantly. So it's pretty cool. But at the same time, it's kind of like makes you a little hesitant day to day um, with some of these lineups. Yeah, definitely. But I, I think a Beltran, if he's in a McCann, certainly there. Um, Gardner and Ellsbury, I mean, obviously I can see being viable options on tonight's slate uh, just because it is a little bit smaller. It is a little bit um, limited as far as, you know, all the teams that we want to use. So mm -hmm. uh, I don't mind going that route. And Teixeira at 2-6 is certainly intriguing for GPPs. Yeah, agreed. So uh, Cubs Marlins here, Kyle Hendricks versus Adam Conley. And uh, the Bryant, um, you know, matchup with the lefty, I, I – I like quite a bit yeah. uh, or not to given Brian's success against Southpaws this year. And yep. not that, you know, not that Conley has been a bad pitcher, but it's just, you know, I, I like that matchup quite a bit. I'm, I'm going to do a, a, a crowd poll and I guess you can join in as well. Did you look at the slate and kind of want to play Conley for a minute there? And then no. you're like, oh, okay, I can't. No, I never did. I did. I had that moment. <laughs> And, like, you can't do it. But um, you're always Mr. Like, anti, you know, fade pitchers against the Cubs. Like, you, uh, you're you always can't. the one who looks and you're like, I just can't do it against these I Cubs. Can't, I can't do it, but I thought about it. And I think that's an important distinction to make. You know, sometimes sometimes it's, there's worth a thought. I mean, Conley has pitched well, really well this year. And if he's on, um, I could see a, a decent outing. But, yeah, you you can't really take the risk. Yeah, I mean, I'm not looking to use them. I, I, I get yeah. that there's a cheap kind of factor on tonight's slate where maybe you're looking at, to dive down. Um, just given the fact that, that Fowler and Bryant, I mean, Zobris, Wilson, Contreras, they're all so solid yeah. against, against left-handed pitching. Um, and those are kind of really the four names I, uh, I like there. On the other side of it, though, it's kind of like, all right, I'll play Bryant. Um, he's a potential cash option, I think. And then um, Zobris does a pretty decent price as well. Yeah, definitely. And in the matchup with Kyle Hendricks, I mean, Hendricks has pitched really well. Um, I, I mean, you know, he doesn't give up a ton of righties. He doesn't give up a ton of lefties. I mean, um, mm. for me, I just don't like this matchup for the Marlins. I, I think Hendricks is a solid arm. Um, and the prices really aren't quite low enough for me to dive into the Marlins. What What about Yelich? Yelich is kind of like the girl dancing, doing the sauce out there. You're kind of like, oh, you know, like uh, maybe I should go out there. I can't dance, though. That's the problem. So you got to take that into account, you know? Yeah, I'm not dancing. Okay. so uh, I'm, ha I'm hanging by the bar with my boy Kyle Hendricks, and <laughs> I'm going to just sit there. And <laughs> <laughs> That's a terrible analogy, but um, Yelich is 3,400, so I don't know. I'm, I'm looking at it. Intriguing okay. to you. 
Intriguing to me as a deep tournament for sure. Yeah. Uh, Blue Jays Astros next here at Marcus Stroman versus Doug Fister. What well, should be Doug Fister tonight? Um, here, I mean, um, the Jays' bats are priced up quite a bit. Fister's been okay against right-handers. It's the lefties he struggled against um, this season. Michael Saunders at 3-7, I don't mind in that ballpark. And and obviously, I still don't mind Blue Jays' bats. But once again, the 4-8 price tag, the 4-5 price tags for, for two of their best hitters is just a little out of my range. That's a lot. Um, I. I don't know that it necessarily makes sense for me. I, I kind of like the Saunders Batista grouping. Um, obviously, Encarnacion and Donaldson have most of the upside in that lineup, but I think um, that's just strictly tournaments. And then, or Saunders and Batista are really the ones I'm looking at in potential cash situations. Yeah, I just think. I mean, uh, Fanduel. I mean, anytime you're closing in near 5K, it's just it's an insane amount of money to spend, yeah. um, you know, when you could arguably get nearly uh, two guys for, for maybe just 500 more who are quality as well. Mm-hmm. Um, I, I just think there's better ways to spend your cash. I mean, obviously it's a, it's a good spot in the ballpark. Um, but for me, it's just kind of GPP only. Agreed. Agreed. So uh, as far as the Houston bats go, um, Marcus Stroman, I mean, he's a guy who's either on or he's off. Um, and you look, I mean, lefties have struggled a bit against or have uh, hit them pretty well this year. 349 Woba, 1.23 home runs per nine. Um, I don't mind, you know, um, any of the lefties that are in that lineup. I mean, could be a uh, it. Rasmus. Say it. Could be Say a Tucker. It. Yeah. Could be a yeah. Um, you, you can look at some of those guys for, uh, in this <laughs> game. I, I don't mind that. <laughs> yeah, no, Kobe Rasmus at uh, 2,900 is really solid. Um, and obviously, if you're looking for a pure punt, Preston Tucker. But um, as far as the righties go, I, I think they're just tournament guys as well. Yeah, I agree. I mean, I'm not really looking to, to exploit them in cash games. I mean, it's not the greatest matchup. If I am looking, it'll just be kind of that lefty power that I'm hoping for. Yep. So I, I think this game could have some pop, but I also think it could be kind of... Disappointing. Um, yeah, I do, given the fact that there are a lot of big names, but um, it could be not be a ton of production. Yep. Uh, Nationals Diamondbacks next, uh, Archie Bradley versus Steven Strasburg. And for me, uh, hard to, to use anyone really at these prices. Um, Goldschmidt at 3-7 in a tough spot. Uh, Lamb, obviously, 3-1. But for me, I'm just kind of staying away from attacking Strasburg as good as he's been. I think that's an interesting tournament play. Um, Lamb. Yeah. Uh, it's not obviously not cash either. But I think at 31, it's really more of a punt play for, for a guy like that, you know? Well, Lamb's been priced, I mean, remotely cheap over the last few weeks. I mean, it's been DraftKings that has him up all the way into the 5K. So, right. you know, I don't quite mind him. Um, but I, I don't know. I, I don't think he's a punt. At 31 for Lamb's kind of punt-ish. I mean, for his potential, it's very punt, cheap. But punt-ish. I don't know. We, we've seen guys go up against aces where they've been priced in the, the mid-twos. So it's like, okay. Yeah, I, yeah. I don't know. I get it. That makes sense. Um, as far as the lefties in this lineup, is this cash for you with Harper and Murphy at 42, or is it more just tournaments? Uh, I don't mind him in cash. Um, even though Harper, I mean, definitely struggling. Um, I don't mind him. Murphy, uh, he's a guy, I mean, if he's in the lineup, definitely a guy who I'll be looking at. you got to pay up for him. Um, but I, I think it's fine on this slate to do that with. I don't mind paying up for an expensive Daniel Murphy or Harper. Um, and I also like Trey Turner um, at that, that spot as well. Harper's been bad. Um, six hits in his last 52 at-bats, not good. So no. you definitely don't like that, but you do like the matchup. Um, I'd probably stick to Murphy if I'm going with one of them. Uh, but I think you can probably do that three-person stack at the top. Yeah, and Archie Bradley's a guy who can, you know, so he's a slump buster. Yeah, I, I mean, three eighty-seven <laughs> yeah. over the lefties, forty percent hard ball rate, one point five six home runs per nine. I mean, that that's just this year alone. Um, and he's had not a great really track record against lefties. So mm-hmm. there's a reason why they're priced up. I just wish there were you know maybe a few more lefties in this lineup. Right. So I still don't mind these guys. I still don't want a mind a Ramos or a Turner. I don't mind that top half of the lineup there. Mm-hmm. Definitely. 
Uh, Padres and Brewers next. Uh, Jared Kozar versus Jimmy Nelson. This one, I mean, it's probably of a, a battle of the two offensive lineups that are just losing their oh only few stars. God. I mean, <laughs> how bad does this lineup look without Matt Kemp in it? Oh, I can't wait for the next lefty matchup versus the Brewers because I'm probably going all in on that unless it's like someone awful. Um, but yeah, I mean, there's just. I mean, we talked about it. Uh, Shrimp fr- probably going to be batting clean up. So, I mean, he's still 2,700. Obviously, has that power um, against Jimmy Nelson. But definitely not a lineup I'm targeting by any means. No, and I think you pretty much named it. I mean, Will Myers, I don't hate. But Ryan Shimp, I mean, uh, come up in price a little bit. But I think deservingly so. Um, I don't mind lefties against Nelson, uh, 330 Wobel odd, 1.33 homes per nine this year, uh, has always kind of struggled with them. So, um, you know, if they throw a ton of lefties in this lineup, I might take a look at some of them as far as value goes. Agreed. Um, some of it potentially valuable. Um, the Brewers again, I, man, that was wild. What Luke Ray did, huh? That's something that was, I don't like I, I don't remember so the last time a sports team, like a, a player did that, like straight up was like, oh, I could go to a contender that could like win the World Series or I could stay with the Brewers and just, I've just never seen something like that. But um, yeah, this, this was definitely interesting. I mean, it, God, I mean, Luke Roy in the middle of that lefty heavy lineup. I mean, you're just, yeah, oh, man. I mean, could you imagine that is that's, you want to talk about one through nine? I mean, oh my god, <laughs> putting Luke in there would have been scary. I mean, it's already scary enough, but oh, yep. So, I mean, obviously, I don't know how the Brewers are going to handle this now. I guess are they just going to sit him out until further notice, or are they just going to throw him back in the lineup? Well, the good thing is, I mean, deadline locks at four um, Eastern, so it's if I mean, I guess if he's you know, not traded, he, he should be in the lineup and, and he'll be a decent catching option. Right. Um, or, you know, or you'll know he'll be out and that'll be the bigger news of the day. So you, mm-hmm. you shouldn't be able to miss it. Um, but if, if he's not traded, he'll be in. Um, and, and obviously if he is traded, he won't be. <laughs> right. It's just weird. Um, so Braun might sit out again. As we've been talking about the last few days, if Braun's out, this lineup's just dead in the water other than Villar and Gannett. So... Those are two of the guys you're really looking at there. Yeah, definitely, and that's that's about it for me. Um, in in this game, it's pretty lackluster. I mean, um, I think the lefties in in the San Diego lineups is interesting, but outside of that, it's Milwaukee is basically two bats that we can use now. Right, and Chris Carter's getting all he got all of his home runs out the last three games, so I, I'd take tonight off. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Red Sox and Mariners, James Paxton and Eduardo Rodriguez, two lefties on the hill. Um, and you look at Rodriguez, I mean, a little bit better, but still, I mean, this season alone hasn't really been great. Um, always when the lefties on the hill, Nelson Cruz comes into mind as being a, a great outfield option. Yeah. You know, priced up 3-9, but definitely worthy of that. We just know his potential against lefties. Um, and there's a couple other guys. I mean, I don't mind Dejo Lee. Um, I, I don't mind whoever's catching, whether it's Zunino or Iannetta, um, for you know, some cheap catching potential there. Yeah, I think Cruz is a cash game guy for me. Um, obviously, like the matchup against Rodriguez, and we all know Cruz's splits against lefties. So um, that's pretty pretty straightforward. The rest of this lineup, I'm probably not um, as in on as you, but I will say Cano's splits against lefties aren't as bad as we want to believe. Like sometimes I just X him out against lefties. I don't think you should necessarily do that at 33. It's kind of an okay price for him. Um, so I'm kind of okay with that three, four sort of grouping. Yeah, I don't mind it either. Um, and, and that three, three price, I mean, is pretty solid and it's not like, um, you know, Eduardo Rodriguez is dominant against left handers. I mean, he's not, he hasn't really been that great as well. So I think both sides of the plate have actually hit him pretty well. Um, so, yeah, I definitely don't mind that. Um, and even Seeger has a little bit of pop against lefties. So, I guess if you didn't want to go um, with those secondary pieces, you could still target the middle of that lineup. And, I mean, Rodriguez has allowed a home run in each of his last eight outings. So, that's that's something right there. And Seiko, I mean, Seiko <laughs> really hasn't been that bad of a hitter's park. I mean, we've no. seen times where the ball really flies out. Mm-hmm. 
So it'll be interesting. I, I think on the Sox side, I, I think you obviously got to like Bogarts uh, uh -oh. and Hanley at those prices. Um, uh -oh. The Betts price tag at 4.6 is a little bit out of my range. Um, so I think I'm just kind of limiting myself to Pedroia, Bogarts, and Hanley, just given that it's a little bit more economical. Yeah. Uh, the Bogarts-Hanley grouping for, for 6,800 total is really nice for me. Um, I think that's... That's definitely in cash play. Um, Pedroia, obviously, uh, the weakest of that lineup, but I still like him at 32. Um, and I'm okay with Betts at 46 as well, even as a huge payup. So those are the guys I'm looking at. I'm, o I'm okay with Ortiz, but I don't see myself paying up for that price. No, I don't think so. When you have Hanley, who has hit lefties very well at you know 1100 cheaper, it's kind of an easy spin down the option. Right, Absolutely. So that's going to wrap things up here at the FanDuel Punch-Out. Be sure to check out DaveFantasyCafe.com for our great tools and content.